Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Thought I'd give you a quick look out the window here. It is absolutely glorious in the bay, and the weather is beautiful. It is hot. We are having a barbecue later. You'll see another live for that. But in the meantime, as we mentioned last week and on Tuesday, it's time for the next Juliet Ede, Chief Alchemist at Heathcliff HQ, Baking Masterclass. Good afternoon, darling. Good afternoon. What are we doing today? Right, today... I've got my lesson plan here. Some of you know I'm, a, I'm an ex-teacher, some of you don't know that. Good afternoon, so, Karen. No matter what you're doing, I'll, I have to teach it. So, my, our learning objective for today is to learn a little bit how pe people lived in the past. Um, and, and celebrate VE Day. And celebrate VE Day, Day. And you will know that you've been successful if you can remember a fact that I give you. And maybe you cook a cake for yourself. So oh, okay. We're going to be cooking Churchill's fruit cake today, which is a recipe that was developed by um, his cook, who was with him for a long time, all through the war, and right up until 1954 when she retired. And her name was Mrs. Landemere. So this is Mrs. Landemere's cake for Churchill. So right, what have we got going on? What have we got going on? First of all, we have... 225 grams of soft butter. Can they have the recipe if they want? They certainly can. I have it all ready to go. It doesn't have a photograph on it at the moment because obviously we've not cooked it, so we've not checked it. Um, so just email us, relax at heathcliffhouse.co.uk. So then we've got 170 grams of dark brown sugar as well in here. And I've just been beating this in the old fashioned wars time style of a wooden spoon so once it, ch it changes color because it goes from quite dark brown to this lighter brown and that's when you know it's ready to add your eggs now there's five eggs oh you just want to lightly this is a wartime recipe i'm guessing you could use dried egg if you wanted to very authentic so, but we're actually using fresh eggs because we live in the country, so we can get we can get eggs down here. We're not rationed on eggs at the moment. And what I'm also going to do is to add a small spoonful of flour as I go along so that the eggs don't curdle. So a little bit of flour. Is it important to sieve the flour? Uh, just for lightness, yeah. Remember, we talked about that previously, that old-style flours used to be quite lumpy and you would want to get any bits of um, husk out. Nowadays they're all so um, professionally milled uh, and mechanically milled that you don't have that problem so much. Okay. So just whisk, uh, any comments, to... any questions, remember to put them in the uh, comments box below. If you just want to say hi, just say hi. And remember, if you don't have your notification settings set up correctly, or your settings set up correctly, we won't see your comments when you're live. So if you think we're ignoring you, it's not always the case. It's just that we don't see your comments until we have finished live and it's posted on our website. And feel free to share as well if you so desire with anyone you think might want to make Churchill's VED, VE Day fruitcake. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to carry on with this, but I thought I might just give you a couple of more interesting points about Heathcliff House as well. When Heathcliff House was built in the 1860s, the first family to live here were the Nobbles. And uh, Cornelius Noble was a retired sea captain, and they had a cook and a domestic servant. The cook's name was Mary Galley. She was 31 and she was born in Jersey. So she was quite a long way from home, I think. Um, yeah, she, they moved here from Portsmouth when he retired from the Navy. So she may well have come with them. Well, they had a nursemaid as well when they first came. Um, yeah, right, a little bit more egg. A little bit more egg. This has to be done in stages, does yes, it? Yes, yes. Why does it have to be done in stages? Uh, just because you want to incorporate it and you're still getting air into your mixture at the moment. That's the science bit of it. All sounds very technical. <laughs> Obviously, I taught her all she knows. Yeah. Good afternoon, Jen. Good to see you again. 
So the next family to live here were the Cali family, um, and they were apothecaries, and they moved here from Totnes, where they had an apothecary shop in Fourth Street. Any comments, questions, put it in the box below, people. And their cook, she's, she was definitely with them for at least 30 years. Her name was Susan Symes, but they knew her familiarly for as Fanny. Oh, right. Yes. In the 1890s, the Johnsons lived here. He was... Uh, we try, it's not just all about full breakfast, you know, Karen Yates. We do try, we try and educate you too. We do. So, yeah, the Johnsons, he was a minister um, at a congregational church in uh, Union Street here, which is not very far from us. Um, and their cook, she lived in Torquay. She was born and bred in Torquay, and she lived until she was 83. She didn't work for the Johnsons for all that time, uh, but she, Anne Millman was her name. And she was born at somewhere called Tor Court, but I can't actually find Tor Court in any records. So if you're watching this and you actually know where Tor Court was, perhaps you could let me know. Hmm. Okay. So what other ingredients have we got going on on this table? So, on the rest of the table, we've got some mixed spice, which will be going in with the rest of the flour. Oh, this looks... There's a tea towel covering something. There I'm looking forward to seeing what's under there. something. Right, I'm just going to scrape down the sides cherries? of the pan. Cherries? Uh, yeah, half cherries, some black treacle, which we are keeping... That's hot water. So I've got the metal spoon resting in the hot water and the tin is in the hot water which has made the treacle quite viscous so it's moving around a lot so that makes it easier to handle does it, it does when you're going to pop that spoon and having a hot spoon means that it will slide off easily too right so i'm getting rid of my wooden spoon now all right why is that because we are at the farm. I'll take that for you as your sous chef. Take that. Thank you very much. Would you keep that though? Yes, boss. Yes, chef. So, next we are going to fold in the flour and the mixed spice. That's a teaspoon of just mixed spice. I want to see what's spice. under here. Okay, okay. All right, all right. I'm just being impatient. I know. Okay, so flour's going in. Yep. Sieve it again. Sieve it again. And then it's the folding figure of eight that you want. Technical stuff. Now if this mixture's a bit firm, don't worry because uh, we've got some liquid to add in a moment. So this was Winston Churchill's favourite fruitcake. Apparently it was made at a, a Chartwell. Uh, and all through the war, apparently. So uh, it is said. Uh, it is said. Now, what did it? What did Churchill? Churchill said he couldn't have got through the war without Mrs. Uh, Landemere's cooking. Well, there we go. And a large brandy and the odd lardy da. Okay. So you can see how this is gone. All the flowers nearly in. Couple more turns, I think, and we should be there. Yeah, that will do. Because we're going to now stir in oh. the dried fruit that has been soaking overnight in brandy and whiskey. No, in cold tea. This is the war. Cold tea. This is the oh, war. Oh, it's the war. Yeah. Now, lots of you may have recipes in your family. Uh, certainly, I'm sure my mum's got a, a, t a tea fruit cake recipe from 1426. Handed to her by her mother. Right. Okay, so we're going to just... So as you can see, some of the fruit, although I'm letting the fruit drain off a little bit, I'm not taking it all off. So that some of the fruit is going in a little down, which will help to loosen that mixture up a bit. But we're not going to throw the liquor here away. Is this where we get the whiskey and brandy out? No, there is oh. no risk whiskey and brandy in this one. This is a wartime. It's a wartime recipe. But I'm going to hold on to that just in case I need a tablespoonful 
in a moment. So then the half cherries. Half cherries. Yum, yum, yum. Remember, if you want this recipe, boys and girls, just email us to relax at heathcliffhouse.co.uk. And uh, just to remind you as well that um, we're going to be live again today. Yes, you're getting double bubble from us today. You know, we cannot stop giving. Um, we will be live again probably around about four, somewhere between, I don't know, actually, four, maybe five o'clock. Because we're taking, and just while we, um, while, while Juliet carries on to mix, as a good director would do, I'll just show you some nice, beautiful scenery outside the window. So there we go, this is the view of the back garden, where we will be in a couple of hours, because we're going to have a barbecue again. And then that means I'll be in charge of the cooking. Look, here's my chilli plants. Look at those jalapeno peppers. Absolutely beautiful. Right, back round to the boss. Tablespoonful of... Pretty cool, if you can see how easy that came out. That's because you did the thing in the hot water with the spoon and the... the thing, but I am now going to swap metal spoons because that one's got treacle on. And did you, did you say you, you did, so this soaked in for, how long was that soaked in Just tea? overnight. Just overnight, but okay. You could just, I mean, two hours is the minimum, but okay. it's best to do it overnight. And just, I did it, them in hot tea because I had... I had to make the tea because we didn't have any tea. Um, but you could use just what's left in your um, teapot. Okay. It doesn't have to be hot. So just stirring this treacle through. Treacle's not essential. If you don't like treacle, don't put it in. Is there a substitute? No, you just don't need it. Oh, okay. It's just going to give it that, that slightly bitter sweetness that you get from... Yum, yum, yum. So, we're nearly there, are we? Yeah. I, I think, think we are. So, the oven's been on. The oven's been on. What have we, what have we set oh, the oven yeah. at? Uh, 150, uh, 300 degrees Fahrenheit, or for us, gas mark two, which is really... Hi, really Margaret. Quite, really, really quite low. So, Hope right. you're still staying safe over there Just in Italy. Just a little Did you bit. like the accent? <laughs> Well, I don't think that was very really like Dominico at all. Well, it was my best Italian. So, yes, Margaret, it does look lovely. Thank you very much. This is uh, Winston Churchill's um, uh, favourite fruitcake, which Juliet is making um, as part of the VE Day celebration, 75 years tomorrow. So uh, we'll be raising a glass to the great man and uh, having a slice of fruitcake. We will. But not the lardy da. Just going to, no, definitely not. Okay, that's right. good. So, we are ready to put it in the tin. I've got a springform tin because you may have seen we bought this to use for the spaghetti pie. So I'm going to use this one. Um, I've buttered it. Uh, it's an 8 inch. Okay. I don't know what that is in centimetres. Yep. Might be 25 centimetres. I should know that. I'm yep. You're a teacher. Taught maths for a long time. Come on, um, yeah, you've buttered it. I buttered it and then I put a circle of... It's tre treacle. Treacle, treacle, Margaret, not trickle. It's treacle. T-R-E-A-C-L-E. -E. This is it. Black treacle. It's a very English... I don't know if you have a similar thing mm. in, uh, in Italy. But there you go. It is quite an English... It's quite a bitter, viscous stuff. Very sweet though. Burnt yep. sugar it is really. Karen, my mother-in-law used to make a cigar sweet with oh. homemade brandy snap. Well, oh. feel free to make some, uh, Karen, and bring them next time you and Nigel are going to come visit us. Yeah, please? Yeah? Yeah. You know you will. Okay. okay. Cake mix is going in. I'm just going to blast this up. We also had a whole family living here of ladies who returned from the Cape Colony in South Africa in the early 1910s and they had servants and unfortunately the father who was a doctor had died out in South Africa so they decided Hi John, is that you? And I think it is, say hi if it is John and uh, Yeah, that was the last cook to live here because as the First World War started, it became increasingly difficult for people, as you may have seen on Downton Abbey and all those historical 
uh, dramas, it was very difficult to get uh, staff, uh, you know, members of staff, servants. So uh, that was our last cook to live here. Okay, so right, we're finishing off now, are Just we? Just leveling it a little. Right. Do you want me to get spirit level? No, but I licked my finger and it was delicious. Um. There we go. We're done. Two hours. Oh, two hours. Two hours in the oven at gas mark two. Yep. Uh, one fifty centigrade, three hundred Fahrenheit. Um, and as ever, we will take a photograph of the finished product and put it at the end of this video. Yeah, make sure that you check that it's cooked by using either a cocktail stick or a kebab stick. Uh, what do you call those? Skewer. Skewer, Skewer that's the word. Right, and do um, what with it? Well, just check, because if it comes out clean... What do you do with it? You stick it in the middle. Oh, yes. Once it's been in the oven. Right. And if it comes up off looking like that, yeah. it's not cooked. Okay. Uh, if it Any comes, excuse? Yeah. If it comes out clean, it's cooked, and you can then let it cool a little, and then pop it onto a wire cooling rack. Okay, all right. Okay. Yep, so in we go. So, go. two hours in there, people, as you heard. So, again, if you want the recipe, just uh, email us, relax at heathcliffhouse.co.uk. We will send it along. Um, if you have nothing to do later, then, as I said, we will be live at around about five or thereabouts, depending on when we get hungry. Toothpick, Margaret says. Mm. Use a toothpick. Yeah. There we go. That's see? what we call a cocktail stick, Margaret. Oh, there we go. So, uh, yeah, we'll be live in a couple of hours when uh, we'll be barbecuing. Um, what have we got? Oh, I'll give you a quick sneak. Yeah, look, I'll give you a quick sneak look, actually. Come on, I'll come round here. I was going to go. Here we go. So, I've been marinating overnight. Um, oh, can you get that bowl out for me? I've got a dodgy elbow. So, I've been marinating overnight. Uh, this is a tandoori chicken marinade that I made. Um, sorry about the light there. There we go. Maybe, no, you can stay still. That's it. Uh, uh, yeah, and then, so that's tandoori chicken. And then what else we got there? We've got... Uh, minty lamb chops. Minty lamb chops, which again, there we go, which is my own personal recipes for both. And again, if you want those, well, anyway, we'll cover that when we get to the barbecue. So, we hope you're carrying on managing to stay safe, boys and girls. Hopefully, Boris will be giving us some good news uh, at least for us here in the UK. I hope everything is improving for you, Margaret, over in Italy. Um, and, uh, yeah, so stay safe, people. If you've got nothing to do later, join us for a barbecue and a couple of beers in a, in a couple of hours, all right? We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.